Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Anna Koina and I'm presenting here today with Santiago Hurtado. Um, we're presenting our work on algorithmic learning while creating and sharing content on social media. We look at any youth practices on social media can involve complex processes that are really similar to algorithmic practices um, like programming concepts and so forth. And so we're looking forward to your comments um, during the Connected Learning Summit. Um, so this study is um, based in the larger problem of educational practice, which is um, related to the gender disparities in computer science. And we seek to identify ways to really broaden participation in this space. And we build on the kind of hopeful notion that if we work with the interests and the passions of youth, we can really mobilize um, these kind of practices toward diversifying different entry points into computer science fields. We also build on a connected learning lens. Um, and so for our project, that meant that we set out to investigate the kind of computational learning opportunities in environments where youth um, are already active. And so specifically, we look at social media. And so for this study, um, we asked, how does engaging in connected youth practices with social media involve algorithmic practices? Um, and so we also then ask, how can we leverage these practices for the design of algorithmic learning activities that are there for everybody? So we selected social media um, as a context for the study because these platforms really engage a large number of youth already. Youth are there, they're sharing their content, they're creating content together. And so they're not really doing this in isolation or like alone, but social media is a really connected environment. And while we acknowledge that social media can also be a really challenging space for youth, um, we approach this topic from, a, from this hopeful idea that um, social media engagement is something that builds crucial understanding of the kind of technical workings of these platforms. Um, so I'm gonna hand over to Santiago now and who's gonna tell you about our methods and then move into findings. All right, thank you, Anna. Okay, so moving on to methods, uh, the study well, regarding setting up participants, we conducted the interviews online with a walkthrough method approach where participants share the screens, uh, usually their phones in the social media platforms and they show them to us. We interviewed 13 girls ages 13 to 18, and they have participated from Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, Germany, and Italy. Regarding the data sources for the methods, uh, the interviews total 15 hours of video data, where we covered four main topics during them. First, demographic information and social media experiences. Second, connected learning on social media. Third, algorithmic learning and fourth, risks on social media. Regarding the analytical techniques, to answer the question about social media connected algorithmic practices, we did an iterative and thematic analysis of the interviews to identify youth algorithmic practices. We identified or understood algorithmic practices as practices that combined youth social media practices and complex decision-making processes with outcomes in mind. Um, and for this, we first did uh, initial coding of these practices through Max QDA, and we included the following codes that identify youth social media practices and connected them with algorithmic practices. So first, we identified content sharing as one of these youth practices, which involved the process of creating content for the participants' social media platforms. This may include stories, posts, uh, reels, or different things that cover the different platforms that the participant may have been using. The second one is the connect the content curation, which includes archiving or deleting content and the process of continually engaging in this until they decide to either delete or archive the said content. And last, the tinkering with algorithms, which including um, training feeds and or testing algorithms beneath the platforms in kind of a playful way to understand how these platforms work. And right now we are in the process of translating 
these practices into flowcharts or Python, Python pseudocodes to visualize computational concepts involved in the practices. But we are still figuring out how to best go about this, and it's part of the work in progress we are still in. Moving on to findings, to answer how do connected youth practices with social media involve algorithmic practices, we present three cases that show youth algorithmic practices similar to computer science concepts. First, uh, we will have uh, three different sections approach in these in these cases. Uh, first, we're going to tell you about the youth social media practice identified, then the algorithmic practice involved, and then some more details in regarding the case. First, we see how social media content sharing can be similar to flow control structures. So sharing in social media, as we mentioned before, involves the complex decision-making processes to uh, take, select, edit, and post content using different apps and consulting friends or family. This uh, is similar to flow or sequential or conditional flow control structures. Flow control structures are statements that determine the order in which instructions are executed within a program. They enable managing the flow of a program's execution or make decisions based on specific conditions. Sequential flow control structures uh, follow one path from start to finish, while conditionals allow the program to make decisions based on whether a condition is true or false. In this sense, uh, we have Carmen, who described creating a birthday story as a practice that involved posting a story on social media uh, on the day of a close friend's birthday. For this, she described the process of choosing the picture quickly editing, tagging, writing captions, choosing fonts, and using multiple apps to create a story. Depending on the output, in this case, the birthday story, this practice can involve various levels of branching decisions mediated by youth practices. On our second case, we have content curation as a loop. The practice, the social media practice of curating content uh, involves visiting previously created content and assessing and making decisions and choices about whether to delete or ICAP this content. And this is similar to a loop flow control structure. Loops are another type of flow control structures that are used to execute a block of code repeatedly, which is helpful for iterating or performing tasks until a certain condition is met. In this case, Margarita, one of the participants, described creating her social media profile depending on her speculations about what her followers expected of her. These speculations were based off of her post performance in likes and comments. This prompter, prompted her to say in a loop control structure, once her content was posted and which would run until the conditions to delete or ICAP the post would be met. This means whenever she thought that something was not according to what her audience wanted, she would revise this and these uh, expectations that change over time might make her delete something she used to post before. Finally, we have our third case, which is tinkering with algorithms, in which we observed how participants could experiment with social media platforms by tinkering with algorithms of the platforms. This practice involved the exploration and testing of social media platforms inner working by developing hypotheses and analyzing them through tests or experiences. Sonia, uh, one of the participants, described experimenting with social media platforms to test how the algorithm works by intentionally liking the content to alter her feed um, or test how the feed delivered content to a friend by comparing their platforms side by side. This practice seemed to involve participants in creating hypotheses about how the platforms work and using their or their friends' feeds to verify if this was true. And this is similar to practices that involve like debugging or troubleshooting. All right, so now I'm gonna give the floor to Anna to move on to the discussion. Thanks, Santiago. Um, and so what does this really mean for us? So in a way, what we see here is that the study showed that social media can be a rich context for practicing kind of computational ideas um, like flow control structures and debugging and so forth. Um, and when we frame these youth practices on social media as computational learning or opportunities for computational learning, it it makes kind of, it, or it values youth everyday practices really as something more than just being online, right? 
they become valuable for learning conceptual ideas um, as well. But at the same time, um, when we zoom out a little bit more, the work also then contributes to broader educational reform initiatives that seek to broaden participation in computer science. And so we kind of feel that if we look at these practices, not only can we frame them as computational learning, but they also add something new to computational culture. And so at the moment, we're in this space um, where we are trying to translate what we're seeing here into hands-on activities and educational workshops that then we can then perform with youth to see whether and how they are um, translating what they are already doing into um, kind of computational language or algorithmic language so that we can start to see whether and how learning can can and is happening in this space. Um, so with this, uh, we're going to close and end our presentation, and we're looking forward to the discussion at the conference. We'll leave this last slide here um, just in case you are interested in any of the citations that we mentioned on the slides. You can take a screenshot and look them up later on. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. All right, pause recording. All right.